just know what, who you're watching, what you're watching here, and why you're here watching it. You know, understand that. Okay. Anyways, if you get bit by a cat, go in. It's a serious thing. You can lose a body limb if that if it's very infected. So you need a shot. It, I don't know what shot it is. Talk to your doctor. But go in if you get bit by a cat. That's why with cats, it starts at 85 bucks plus tax, and it goes up from there. And I, 99% of the time, do not blow dry the cat. And I do not own a cage dryer, so we do not cage dry anything. I would rather that dog go, go home damp that cat go home damp than to be um, either under pressure or be in a cage dryer. Look up cage dryers. There's a lot of businesses, uh, pet businesses that have killed a dog using a cage dryer. And I can say we used a lot of them at the box places and um, carelessly putting three or four on the cage unknowingly uh, because no one was training us, we were just, it was part of the job, you just, on the job training, it's like boom, 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 you got a big dog, put like four on there so it can dry in two hours, so, you never know what's happening behind the scenes, always get a tour. Okay, the next line, this client's gonna be here any minute, you guys. Okay, I'm... Hey guys, thanks for watching Dee Dee Croy with my favorite groomer. I am doing a Christine Baines coconut dog, um today and I've recently just more so started really talking to the the clients sign an agreement they always sign an agreement uh, for those comments um, that like you never get approval what I always get approval you see this form right here this form it's like signing your life away dude and um, I should read the form out to you let me give you an idea so a uh, first thing I say you're fine to responsible if your pet bots a human the next one is if you want to support me like I'll send you this if you send me um, a donation like if you're a new groomer and you want my words this is copyright material like for my favorite groomer LLC but I will share it with you but um, I've done a lot of work with um, like you're buying me to help you do your business I, I'm cool with that um, and I will send it to you and you can use my form and you can add whatever you want to add to your own tidbit you know but uh, it at the end of the day the time it takes for me to do training basically some of you guys are really learning how to groom like through all of my YouTube at the end of the day all that is education and it's uh, priceless so when you pay an educator which we do when I went to college I spent over 40 grand so that's why if some of you think it's all about money it's not but it is saying thanks a lot Didi for educating me thanks a lot for posting the videos taking the time to put this out there and then thanks a lot for letting me like copy everything you're doing because I, I don't mind but there's a dollar amount that comes to that and that's if you, if I borrowed so if I asked um, like I've done so many things if I was uh, I bartended for 13 years so if I was uh, gonna open up my own bar but I was gonna copy everything Applebee's was doing I would call them up and ask permission and then ask them well what do you want kickback I'll give you $200 a month to copy all your menus I mean like it it is what a business is about it's, it's how we run so if someone were to copy everything we do then uh, wouldn't it be like they could take you out of business, right? Or I, you just don't go copying everyone what they're doing. You do your own thing. But I've done a lot of work on my business, and I'm willing to share it with you uh, for a dollar amount. So, And I'm not trying to, man, you don't even know the bills I have. I'm by myself. I do everything by myself. So every contribution, contribution goes a long way. And for me to still be able to do everything by myself, I'm not rich. I don't have a savings account, you know, like I don't have um, a retirement plan. Uh, but I'm willing to still give everything back to the community that I can. So um, I'm kind of scared because I'm getting older, but I mean, it is what it is. So I'm hoping this year and the years to come will God will bless me. And that's all that's all I can do is pray for that. So this is not I'm not ranting. I'm just saying, hey, for a dollar amount, I will share all this with you email me um, and I'm serious because if someone has said that to me when I started my business I would be like please here's a hundred dollars give me all the forms give me this and that like tell me how to start my business right I did it all by myself and I learned along the way I'm not perfect I learned along the way so this is a uh, I might as well to turn this video into what I make them sign so y'all youtubers can see just how much I make them like basically sign their life away and have I ever gotten an argument about it about my form yes and matter of fact, one lady, she came in and she was, uh, this is years ago. So it's uh, 2017 now. It's April 26th, I think. 2017. 
and went three years into my business. So I started my own business back in 05. I started grooming in oh, oh, the end of 02, the beginning of 03, something like that. 2002 and 2003. Um, and I had a client... I worked for the FAA, a Federal Aviation Administration. I have a huge, extensive background, and uh, I've done a lot of things. Um, and I used to groom only at night because I would be groom. I would be working for the government um, all day, and so I would only groom at night. And I have not. I'm, I can't say that I've ever had a weekend like regular schedule. I work uh, usually seven days a week, and we're going into like 13 years now. Granted, I take vacations. And I take a day off here and there, but um, a person can only go like that so long. You know, it's gonna catch up. So you got to make sure you're happy all the time after hours. So I, I work hard, play hard, and that's kept me balanced pretty much. But you get you get to a point. You're gonna get to a point where you need that time, and you need to re, you need to feel it. Your body needs to feel. If your body feels tired, you need to rest. And boy, this is turning into all kinds of stuff here. Okay, so I had a lady that. Um, uh, an FAA co-worker of mine told an, her, because she was coming to me at night for grooming, right? And she would drive from Arlington to Haltom City, Watauga area in Texas. That's like 40 minutes for a groomer. So that should tell you something right there. Excuse me. It's like the one hour. I've always done one hour grooming. And that's why, because I used to work eight hour shifts. And then after work, I wouldn't, I don't, I couldn't and wouldn't book an hour. I wouldn't have like 10, 10 dogs show up and, and sit there in cages. So I was like, I'm going to do one at a time. One, and you want your business to be known for one thing, whatever that is. I'm an expert at nail trim, which I am. So I don't, I really don't, I don't push that. I push one hour. I'm done with your dog in an hour. And that's what I, and I took that. I learned that in a class at super zoo years ago is like, be known for one thing. There's too much going on, you know. I do pet sitting, but I'm not out there going, I'm a pet sitter. You barely can find it on, on all the stuff I write. You, like, you know it's out there if you're reading about my favorite groomer a lot, but I'm known for one thing, one hour grooming, and done in an hour, done by appointment. Like, of course, there's one out of, like, that I do a dog in an hour, including some of these golden retrievers and big dogs, so... Very rarely I have that dog, and when they're when they're aggressive and crazy, it seems like I get them done faster because I either have parent assist. So, anyways, no, be known for one thing. Whatever you're gonna be known for, be known for one thing. I can, sh I shave dogs like you know fast. I um, pet sit like I'm gonna bend over backwards and pet sit. I work 24/7, which means you're really good at answering the phone no matter what, right? Um, be known for one thing. Figure out that what that one thing is, and then drive it everywhere you go everyone should know this is what i do i one hour groom this is what i do that's what i'm good at one hour grooming okay phone's going off it's like seven in the morning i was up till uh over midnight last night i mean everything you see i do on youtube isn't even half of what i really do so go figure that um it's pouring rain outside here in texas today but um I'm saying um a lot I've done so many things. I wish I could share that all with you, but in time you'll see, like it'll come out in some of my videos. Like Toastmasters, um, the word um, I should not be saying um. Okay, we're gonna get back to the form. And then I'm gonna tell you, this lady coming in in the next 10, 15 minutes, it's probably 8 a.m. now, It's probably, but I mean, it's early. Uh, I worked her in today. I have real estate meetings and she was desperate at 10 o'clock last night. So I said, look, we need to book you for the year. Because uh, just yesterday I sent, sent about 300 emails yesterday. I plan to send a bunch more. I have over 5,000 clients. All of them do not come in regularly. So I am only touching base with people I have seen in the last year. And uh, not even the last year, but uh, yeah, maybe the last six months. I'm touching base with everyone that comes in so regular i've seen him in the last six months and letting them know i'm about 60 days out on appointments and i do not like my appointments my group excuse me i don't like my clients that have been with me for years like i've been grooming their dog 10 years nine years seven years 12 years if i've been grooming your dog that long i do not like you to call me and have to wait to get in so i'm letting those clients know if you're not booked for the year you might wait 60 days to get in and if you want to wait 60 days, then don't do anything. But if you don't want to wait 60 days because I care about you and I love you and I don't want you to wait, here's your warning. So I sent all those emails out yesterday 
And this lady, um, I've seen, oh my gosh, you guys are going to be, mm -mm, mm -mm. you guys are going to be pissed. She told me last night, I want to chew her ass. That's exactly what she said in the text mes message. She said she's been so busy. She's a nurse. She's been so busy. And you've seen video one, like or series, this is going to be series, uh, this is a series. When I do a series, it's like uh, different days, months, same dog. So when I put a series out there, you got to go look series and then that, that topic, right? That, that dog or whatever. So this is going to turn into a series now because this is the second set, second appointment. I saw her November 17, 2016. It is April. I should quit, should quit guessing. It's Wednesday, April 26th. And how long is that? November. December, January, February, March, April, five months. And this dog was um, referred to me from Groom Room. Thank you, Crystal. Appreciate you on all the business you send my way. She didn't even look at, like, she was like, go, Dee Dee, don't talk to me. Crystal was like, do not talk to me, go. Like, take the first exit out. <laughs> but she sent this lady to me because this is an 18 year old Shih Tzu mixed dog. And we, Shih Tzu, like Maltese. Mom assists. It's very aggressive it's blind it's probably aggressive because it's blind it's what happens sometimes when you get a blind dog and I've lived through that so I know not all dogs get aggressive when they're blind but um, when you're blind you don't see anything you see haze so you don't know what's coming at you sometimes when you get older so I hope this is still recording okay sorry I'm all over the place right now it's too early okay so um, I saw her July 23rd, 2016. I saw her uh, November 17th, 2016. I'm going to see her April 26, 2017. And I'm okay with the distance of the groom. I'm not okay when you wait till they're matted. So I had not seen the dog yet tonight or last night. Like a picture, a picture to me, no offense world, the pictures just don't show me a picture. I mean, if you're like, my dog weighs this much. For the dimension of that picture, like this, it it's like, the picture's not 3D dimensional. So, I've had a dog that looks like it weighs 20 pounds come in at 100 pounds. So, the pictures, they don't do, you know. So, anyways, I haven't seen a picture of it. Sometimes they text me a picture. She said she has a matted, dirty, da-da-da-da-da dog, and I'm about to, I'm probably going to chew her ass today. And I said, can you book earlier, question mark? Like, can you book earlier? I, you find me, right? You find me. No one wants to take an 18 year old dog. You find me. And then we wait till the dog's completely matted every time. No, it's not okay. So we're going to definitely get her on the books today. And the dog may pass away at any time, but we're going to have her an appointment set up. Don't be afraid to be like, look, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it anymore. I cannot do this to your dog anymore. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to say that because I'm going to say that. I'm going to say I can't do this anymore. I need you to book ahead. I don't need to be to my, at midnight talking about can you come in at 8 in the morning. Like I don't need to be doing that to myself. Um, I work really hard. I love what I do. But don't. don't just don't. Just just plan ahead. Okay? So we're going to get her on board. Now, go, let's go back to the release statement. So that's, okay, let's just go with that's video one for coconut, and I'm going to start another video real fast on this statement so that you guys know what I'm talking about, and instead, because I talk fast, and I don't really want you copying it unless you tell me you're copying it, because I like people to be loyal. I like people to be loyal to who taught you stuff. That's what I like. Okay, hold on. I'll be back. Okay, so we're going to go over my customer release statement, and it changes. It rarely changes, but it does change. And recently I felt like what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a clipboard. It's going to be hanging up and anybody that comes in and I'm going to get a sticker printed for the door once I decide, honestly, if I'm going to decide what I'm doing with my salon. Um, get a sticker printed for the front of the door that says anybody that walked in here is, um, you know, getting, uh, is on, well, it's already, people are already on video. I've got like 20 cameras up in here. So they're already on security cameras, but I'm going to do a, a sticker that says, this is a YouTube, a YouTube recording establishment. Everything that is done is on YouTube. That's it. So then everyone knows. And in the state of Texas, we, uh, I'm not a lawyer. 
<laughs> I know a little bit about a lot of things. So I'm not a lawyer, but I do know that it may have changed. But last time I checked, you can record in the state of Texas the phone conversation and a video without telling somebody. But I'm just going to be respectful. And uh, for the YouTube haters out there, um, I ask for permission every time I'm doing something like that. You're not there because I've already asked permission before we started recording. There's a lot of things that happen before and after a recording. Okay, life goes on and life was already going on before the video. Okay, just FYI. And it's funny because I know my subscribers are going to see this video, but those people that are haters, they don't watch every video. They watch one video, get limelight, and then bounce. So, ah! So my subscribers, thank you for being loyal and putting up with me talking about all these haters. I'm going to stop talking about the haters eventually because they're not worth my time anymore. I'm just getting tired of talking about them. And uh, what you'll probably see is I will not allow cuss out comments. I'm trying to clean up um, comments, which is like right now there's some a handful of videos that people can still comment without my approval. And they still exist. And as I see it happening, because I get emails of all the comments, I try not to read it because it's uh, I try not to let it puncture into my spirit and my emotions. I try to let it wash right off because I don't know these people and they don't know me and they don't they should not affect me because they don't know what I'm doing and quite frankly when I click on their YouTube pages they don't have any videos so that tells you a lot about like what they're willing to share with their life right so let's just let's really judge here if you want to judge anyways gosh I'm talking a lot man I just had all I had was one double shot of coffee I mean I don't know what's going on so customer release statement. If you plan on using my, any of my stuff, please let me know. Be courteous. Uh, always, I always respect people that taught me and I will tell you where I found out something, right? I give credit where credit is due. And nothing in life is free, absolutely nothing. Someone paying for it with their time, their labor of love, nothing is free in life. So I always take care of people. Dude, when I visit my friends across the, the nation, you can ask them, man. If they let me stay at their house, man, uh, my, my family, my like adopted family in Guam. When I go visit, man, one time I dropped $700. They let me sleep on a, a bed in their living room. I gave them 700 bucks. She was able to buy her kids like some st uh, all this soccer equipment and stuff for sports, and she was so grateful. And I said, my mom taught me, my mom's Asian from Taiwan. And that's just how you do it. Like, you never take people for granted, ever, even including your own family. My parents never take me for granted, ma'am. They're really, really good to me. We've had, families have problems, but when it comes to, like, giving, that's I'm talking about giving and receiving. Um, give more than you receive, and if you find a lot of givers, you'll get more than you've ever given. Does that make sense? So, when I ask you to support me and be loyal and use, if you're going to copy everything I do, give a kickback. That's what I ask because um, uh, you're learning through me, right? That's if you are. If you're just a random watcher, I really don't care. You know, you're just hearing what I'm saying. But there's some, you don't know them, but they, they email me and they're learning from me and I'm there for them all hours of the day, okay? Uh, and you don't need to know who they are. I just know they, who they are and you know who they are and you know who you are, right? Okay, here we go, Dee Dee. Customer release statement, and this has changed about three or four times. I don't like to change it very often. I want to be able to, what I used to do when I worked at PetSmart years ago, we would have to sign the agreement every time. Like it would take five minutes to sign this agreement every groom. So I was like, no, we're gonna sign it once. The only thing that I have found is that they'll forget what the fees are, but I've been more over the years, like more adamant about like, look, here's the fees, you know, like be loud about it. Like I want you to know what the fees are so you because I'm not going to talk to you again about this for 10 years it says here 10 years I don't want to do a form every time you come in I'm gonna make your life easy the first time we talk for five to ten minutes and then the next time two two months later I'm like hey see you in an hour bye see ya you know it's unless they want to chit chat okay cut time there and then you're able to move quickly right if you're gonna do a dog an hour you need to be efficient with everything you do so uh, customer release statement. I am fine. This and I read it to them. I do not say here sign this for me. I don't do that. People don't read. So on their first appointment with me, I give enough time that we might have 20 minutes of chit chat. Um, and let me go back. Yes, I had a client um, when I first opened my business. So I worked for the FAA. A coworker referred her to me. 
They drove 40 minutes at the same time on a Saturday to come see me. I groomed her dog, and then I was checking this new client in, her friend, a neighbor. And she, this lady, I remember, she was like, so you're telling me it's not, you know, that's exactly how she talked to me. And um, she was older than me, uh, so I was younger than her. And I was like, I'm not going to groom your dog if you don't sign this form. I said, I'm not going to, it's changed now, it's even more strict. But I was like, I'm not going to jeopardize, I'm not going to put my ability on the line if your dog has a problem, like bites me. I'm not going, what happens when a dog bites a human? Do I go sue you? No. What happens when I nick your dog? You come to me and we, I pay for everything. So do you see the flip there? I've been, uh, I actually haven't been bit a lot. I'm really good at what I do and being able to, you know, like figure it out as I'm going. And um, I haven't been bit a lot, but when they have bit me, I can tell you right now, no, no, they didn't come back and give me $150 or they didn't go take me to the doctor. Or they didn't make sure I was healthy. They didn't cut, like my scars and stuff. I have more scars from scratches than I do bites, but they, that client owner of that dog that bit me did not do something extra special for me. They did not pay extra special stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like above the groom cost of a, cra a crazy aggressive dog. They, anyway, do you see though how the flip is? Okay. So consider that if you're uh, just a, if you're not a groomer and you're watching this, if your dog bites a human, what are you willing to do? Cause if I, if, if you're, if I cut your dog, I'm willing to pay for the vet cost. But what are you willing to do if your dog bites me? It should go both ways. I can tell you right now, they don't do nothing. I've gotten a, maybe a $5 tip, $20 tip. Um, nothing over 20 on a dog bite. I can tell you that right now. Nothing over $20 tip, I mean. And one dog cut my face like this. like, And that wasn't even a bite. I've had more damage done on uh, nail trimming because that's what I'm really good at. Uh, it doesn't mean, like, these are aggressive you saw the other day that crazy dog, man. We need to get that under control. But I'm willing to go in there. I'm going to go in there and we're going to get it done without go getting that dog in sedation. People, two or three people, you know, like that are in the industry that still can't get it done. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. Like I had this one dog and, and I learned, like I learned, I'm not perfect. So I'm learning the hard way. This guy comes up, it's like a basset hound, but it's a Rottweiler. So it's short like a basset hound, but it's got a head of a Rottweiler. It was the craziest looking dog I've ever seen. And I should have told him how to hold that dog. He thought he knew how to hold that. And I know how they should be holding this dog, right? So he walks up and I'm thinking I can, I can knock this out. He's holding the dog like this, like, you know, barreling it like this, heads over here, feet are sticking straight out to me. And I'm like, sure, I got this, knock. Nah. That dog was like, rawr, rawr, and it kicked my face and it swiped a whole cut across my face. It barely missed my eyeball. And um, that guy did not tip me at all. It was 20 bucks and that's all. He, so I had this scar across my entire face. I was pissed. And I was pissed at myself because I am smarter than that. I should have said, that's like, I should have said, that's not how you're holding it. That's why I'm learned so i've learned there's a reason why who i am today i've learned so much about my own mistakes and how people approach me and people like the that are not in the grooming industry kind of tell you think they know and tell you what to do. no no there's no you know we're not doing it like that and don't be afraid to say it because it's that one time you're like fucking dd man what are you doing why did you let him hold that dog like that it was like at eye level you know the feet are like at eye level looking at my face i was like here it is no, it wasn't going to be easy. It wasn't aggressive. He told me it wasn't aggressive. I don't know what I was thinking. I remember the rest of the day, I had this, it was bloody. It was all across my face. And I had, that was one of the first dogs I did that morning. It was during some outdoor events that I do. And if, always have, neo, if you're a groomer, always have Neosporin. Neosporin will take the scar away. Like three days later, it was gone. I was so like, oh. I believe in oils and I have to do an oil video, but I had this scar, I had this, oh my gosh, I was so freaking out. Like it was, it was my face, you know what I mean? And I always tell my clients, watch your face, because whatever happens to your face, sometimes it can't, we can't fix it. And then you are looking at the world through that and you are going to have a confident issues. I mean, we just do, it's just natural. You get a pimple, you're, not, you're like, I got a pimple, you know? You get a cold sore, you're like, oh gosh, I got a cold sore. So what about a scar, you know, that your dog left, you know, so... Okay, so, I don't even know where I'm going with this video. I haven't even read the customer client form. 
Oh my gosh. And this client's about to walk in, you guys. Okay. Um, I got way off on that one. Let me go back to the customer client form. This is what I'm doing. The more I talk, the more I read the form, the more I'm giving you stories. Man, there are so many stories. Okay. First, you're fine to responsible if your pet bites a human. It's never happened. I've never had to use that. I've been bit, but I've never had to go to the doctor or anything. Uh, if a cat bites you, you need to go in ASAP. Cat's mouth is severely dirty. It's and it could it could literally lead to. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a vet veterinarian. I'm a veteran. I'm not a veterinarian. If you're watching my channel and you're you're telling me, are you not a vet? Okay. Every uh, all of my videos, you can see I'm a groomer. I am a lot of other things too, a realtor, a Lyft driver, an Uber driver, um, negotiator. I mean, I'm a lot of other things, but do not come on my channel and be like, are you a veterinarian? If that's the case, I don't want to talk to you. Let me tell you, when you own a dog, you are your, you are your dog's nurse and your dog's doctor. You will know more about your dog than, than, uh, it's a real estate client. I need to call, I need to pick that up in a minute, but hold on. Okay, so you are your dog's best advocate. When it comes to the decision of putting your dog down, you're going to make that decision, not the veterinarian. So ask yourselves when you look and judge other people in the sense of, are you a veterinarian? No, I'm not. But let me tell you, I'm, I can, I've caught cancer on dog. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them on video too. Some of these clients that I've caught cancer on their dog that their veterinarian did not capture. And I didn't need to dig in and do surgery to find it. I saw it and I knew kind of what it was. I'm not a veterinarian, but I'm going to give advice. And they went in and they listened to me and we lost that dog in six months. And I'm grateful that I was able to tell them this is something that I think might be cancer. And it was. So if you go and you have a child, you're that child's nurse at home. If you don't think you are, Sit back and think because you are. So what I do is I work with my specialty expertise is aggressive senior disabled dogs. That's why 90% of my videos are horrible videos to watch in the sense of like, <gasps> I'm cringing. I'm like, oh my gosh, don't get bit. Oh my gosh, you know, like, don't cut that dog. Oh my gosh, you know, like, I don't want to cut that dog, but that dog's attacking me. Have you ever tried to groom something attacking you? Try to give your child a haircut and have your child act like a dog it will you would cut her face open like it would just be like a massacre so financial i read this out to them okay i read it directly out to them and then i have them sign it i don't let them read it i read it to them so me and them are under an understanding and i explain every one just like i'm explaining it to you now and it takes this long i am financially responsible if a pet bites a human this is them, you know. I usually read it like, you're responsible. You give the groomer permission to use the vet of, my, of, your, vet of your choice in the emergency. Sorry, I'm burping. Excuse me. Again, I do a lot of senior dogs. I'm talking, this dog I'm about to do is 18. I mean, it's 19 now, so. Oh my gosh, isn't that awesome? She got to have her dog around for 19 years. So, if that, if that dog is left under my care and mom doesn't stick around, if that dog has a seizure, I'm on the phone with the mom. They, and they, they, if they don't pick up, which has happened. Oh, she's here. I gotta go. We're gonna record it. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.